Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about how to acquire customers as an artist. I want to say this because a few days ago, I received an email from an artist saying, I just found your project on the internet and I found it so exciting. I would love some advice from you because I'm going to open my own art gallery next year and I have no idea where to start. I have difficulties acquiring clients. Please help me. And I checked his project and the moment I saw and I was like, wow, this guy is a true creative entrepreneur. He had a lot of entrepreneurial qualities and I found this project is an idea worth sharing. And I would like to share with you in the form of business case study so we can all analyze the challenges that he's facing and how he can make this project a success. And together, maybe we can all contribute to the success of the project by sharing some advice. And if you have any advice make sure you leave me a comment below and I will send this link to him so that he can see your advice as well. I will not reveal the true identity of this artist um, gallerist uh, because he told me this is a work in progress he doesn't feel comfortable yet but maybe in the near future once the show is running he will come out of the closet but right now uh, let's just call him Adam and let's go to the business case study of Adam. Adam is an artist born and raised in Japan. He went to art school because ever since he was young, he wanted to become an artist. After graduating from art school, he wanted to go to the best place for him to become an artist. And he bought a one-way ticket to the Big Apple, New York City. After his arrival, he really settled in. He started making local friends, having exhibition opportunities, but it's always group shows and you know, it's never in a very um, promising location. And he was trying to get into a gallery and after three years of trying, he couldn't find a gallery representation and he was very frustrated. So he took a full-time job as a graphic designer in a large company and now he's working nine to five. And one day he was complaining to a friend of his saying, you know what, it's really hard to make it as an artist. I don't have a gallery to represent me after all these years. And his friend said, I own a hair salon, remember? You can come to my salon, make your art exhibitions in my salon if you want. You can run a gallery and bring other artists as well. I'm sure you have many friends who are frustrated like you. And let's make it happen. If you want to sell something, give me a percentage. I'm, I'm glad, but if you don't want to give me nothing, I'm just here to help you because you're such a good friend. So Adam was very inspired. It's like a lightning had struck him and he's like, all those years I've been waiting for this opportunity to show my art and I can make it come true myself. And he started organizing the first exhibition, but after a while when he was almost ready, the hair salon closed because of the skyrocketing rent and a couple of other business issues and he lost this great opportunity. Although this opportunity didn't materialize, this idea stuck with him and he decided to continue pursuing this project in this direction. So he started emailing people, posting on Craigslist and asking around every single day for months and months. And finally he found five artists and one company would like to join this project. And this company is a interior design firm who is going to open a new office location in downtown Manhattan, beautiful office, you know, very, very nice environment. And he can use the office space or the walls for free during the office opening hours. When visitors come during the office hours, there are always people around to explain a few things about artworks and to attend to the visitors. 20% of the sales will go to the company, 20% will go to Adam and 60% will stay with the artists. And the list of artists are still growing. Next year, he's going to open his first exhibition and he's going to do the rotation solo show. So every artist gets opportunity to have solo shows for a couple of months and then it changes and changes. And right now, the biggest challenge is how to get collectors to visit and purchase the artworks. And this is um, not only his problem, I think it's also the problem of the new boutique interior design form because they're also new in this location and they're both struggling. In a way, it is a positive thing because he's not paying anything for the rent. But on the other hand, he's not getting the synergy from the, let's say, the traffic and existing collectors um, existing customers from the other part of the company. So he is pretty much on his own promoting the artists that he represents. In order to make this project more successful, he really needs to invest a lot of 
time, energy and money into developing business strategy, marketing strategy, acquiring new skills, even recruiting new team members to make it happen and make it successful. That's why I would like to give six advice, three physical, three digital advice to make this project successful. Physically speaking, this gallery is located in a really good location in a downtown Manhattan. However, there is a huge downside that is inside of an office space in the building, like it's not in the street. So you don't have the street food traffic. People don't randomly discover your gallery and the art inside. That's why it's very important to get people to visit by you know, spreading the message locally and getting people to arrive where you are like safely without getting lost. So my first advice is to create events such as private viewings, private sales, inauguration, artist talks, and all the things that you can imagine, workshops with children, you know, learn how to paint. I mean, even there are some things that you think you will never do, but yes, you will do in order to bring people to that location. And you can use platforms like Meetup, Airbnb Experience, Eventbrite, Facebook events to promote such events. You can use each platform corresponding to one kind of event, or you can just specialize in one platform, such as, for example, Meetup. Recently, I organized the Meetup myself in Madrid. If you would like to check out, here is the link. The second advice is to get your partner companies to actively promote your project because they are taking 20%. Although they might forget that occasionally because they're busy with their own promotion, make sure remind them persuade them into including your data, like your logo, your web address, because the address is the same location. That's the convenience. So include all these details into their marketing material so that you know, they are doing one stone, two birds, right? They're killing your bird for you and they are getting the 20%. So use that as a, a leverage to get them working in a synergy with you. And if you're partner in the same project, make sure they feel being a partner. Number three, get more partner companies like local stores, cafes, hair salons, and leave um, materials like brochures, name cards in their counters so people can discover your location, especially in the, let's say, one kilometer radius so people can walk past and then they see, oh, nearby there's an inauguration, I'll go. And then you have to make sure that those things will not be, let's say, uh, lost, right? Once you put there, they may see, oh, just marketing, they'll throw it away. So you have to make it attractive by, for example, uh, doing some kind of marks, like uh, art prints or marks, and leave those materials in their stores so they don't throw it away easily, and you give them more incentives uh, by giving them gifts to promote your project. Now let's talk about digital marketing. And digital marketing can be so expensive. It can be insanely expensive. The good thing is, if you are willing to learn the new skills, invest your time and a little bit of money, you can do it for very, very cheap. You can learn all the skills as a total beginner. You don't need like coding skills. You don't need all this kind of IT skills. You just need to be an average user of social media and website and computer. And you can acquire those skills fairly easily. And once you have that, it will save you a lot of money. And in case of your website crashed, for example, unexpectedly, you can quickly jump on your computer, fix it right away without breaking a sweat. So that all the skills is super worth acquiring if you can have the time to learn it, learn it instead of paying someone else to do it. And now I will give you three advice. Number one, build a fully functional website and then get a mailing list. It's very important for people to be able to find your website on Google. So if the website is well built, you can compete on SEO, search engine optimization. They search Manhattan, office gallery, you're on top, they click and then they see a mailing list. Once they give you their data, you you have like basically a gold mine. You have the most valuable asset. This is the business lead, and you have those people willing to give you their personal details, right? You know, send me marketing material. This is a lot better than sending them direct mails without them having to ask, right? So it's also right now illegal to send them random stuff. So it's very important to have their consent by using that mailing list. Number two, build a local presence on Google Map 
or Yelp or TripAdvisor or whatever um, app or platform that your local people are using, make sure you have a digital local presence in the physical location. Like, you know, when people are navigating and they're getting lost, they don't know which office building you are in, which floor you're on, they don't know your opening hours, they are so lost, they need to call you, they need to see your contact details. So you need to make sure that your little um, bubble pop out on the map when they are navigating. And it's very important to have stars, like five star reviews. So have all your friends review your location once you have it and then create user generated content to boost your local SEO using Google map. Number three, choose one or two social media to specialize in, to focus on, and growth hack. Growth hacking is a method to quickly gain following without spending too much money. You're not paying, actually, you're just using some free tools or some paid tools, but they're so much cheaper than paying Instagram or Facebook. They're like money burning machines, trust me. Like, if you spend on SEM, on like Facebook marketing, or Instagram, it's so expensive. So, it's better to use growth hacking. The risk is you might lose your account. But the good news is if your account has 80, 100, 200 followers, you don't have anything to lose, practically speaking. So when you are starting out fresh from zero, it's good to use growth hacking. Once you, you reach like 8,000, 10,000 um, following, maybe it's too risky to use those methods and then you can switch to organic growth. And it's very important to grow one or two social media as your strength and maybe just another a couple of more to just cover the base in case not to miss out the next trend you can you know have a snapchat but you don't have to you know constantly always promote on snapchat you can use maybe just instagram and facebook or something like that choose two of your favorite social media and really dig hard use all the tools available and growth hack those are my three digital and three physical um, advice on how to grow so that you can acquire clients. Together, the physical and digital is digital, which is a very uh, trending thing. And I think because you are a physical location, you are in downtown Manhattan, there are a lot of strengths. At the same time, because you don't have a website yet, you don't have a social media yet, and this can be a weakness and you have to see when to work on what. Unfortunately, I wouldn't advise you to open the space before reaching the milestones in your online presence, like the digital presence. For example, I would recommend an artist or a gallerist to do two years on digital presence first before going public. Like you would do a nine to five job and work on two years on your communication. Once you feel ready, you have 50,000 following, you have a website running, you have business leads and boom, you launch and you push hard and you quit your day job and then you fully working on your project. However, because Adam has already nailed a deal and it's a good opportunity that he doesn't want to lose and he is already launching next year in a couple of months. If you want this project to be successful next year, you really need to catch up in the promotion and you really need to uh, work really hard with all the time and money and energy you have on promotion. And that could mean raising off your business overhead because you are spending on promotion website or you know web designer or you know you are spending on people, on project, on tools, on hosting space. My idea is to keep the cost low for two years and then launch. But if you can't wait that, you can growth hack and you can push a little bit by working extra hard. And I believe you can because for someone who are, you know, who persistently send emails and striking deals, to make it happen and go into a business without prior business experience, I think that being able to um, be brave to start that project is already a very, very, very um, courageous, a very good uh, step. And the rest will follow if you put the hard work in and with the right timing, with the right tools, with the right economy as well, uh, it will all work out. It's just a matter of time. Now I'd like to hear your advice. If you are listening to this, make sure you leave me a comment below. And that's it. Thank you for your time and see you next time.